Hello! Welcome back to Mailbag Monday. As you can see, I have an awful lot of stuff, so we'd better get at it. Oh! And, and hiding behind all this stuff, we have a Pioneer Harvest Stout from Farmery Brewing. Mmm, nice. So let's get rid of this big ugly guy first. It's taking up all the space on my pile here. This one came from somewhere in Canada, uh, from Quebec. So I have no clues on the outside, but inside it says it's an LED headband magnifier. Okay, one of those. That came quick. I didn't order that that long ago at all. But since it was huge, I figured I'd better open it because it takes up so much space in my incoming mail pile. So this is mostly going to be for model railroad work, for really fine detail work. But I guess also when I'm working on surface mount stuff, it'll probably help me out too. Um, so where'd the box go? Uh, well, one and a half, three times, eight and a half, and ten times. Okay. So the reason I got something like this, instead of using my, just using my phone to zoom in when I'm doing videos, is because it won't mess up my binocular vision. When I'm just looking through my phone zoomed in on something, I can't see, you know, I can't see depth properly, right? And I ran into a problem when I was doing one of these kits. I can't remember which one it is. I'm just looking off to the side here. Um, anyway, oh, it was the one of the power bank kits. And I thought I was soldering the right pad, but I was actually soldering further back and I couldn't tell because I didn't have my, my uh, 3D vision. So hopefully this should help with that. I'm just gonna grab some batteries and put it into there. That's not bad. Kind of fits in there. Put the cover back on. Hold them in place. That's a little clunky. Hey, oh, well, there we go. Okay, what does that do? Oh, okay, you can steer the light side to side. That's handy. That'll actually be handy when I'm working up underneath the railroad. Nifty. Now, then can you see through the magnification? Oh, you kind of can. And, oh, you notice that there's you know, two panes to it. Okay. So that's one zoom. Oh, wow. There's the next one. And then you can bring that in as well. Huh. Now, the only problem with using these kind is you can't look like a dorky old man using it. I kind of do anyway, so it's not a real big deal. And you're not going to see me when I'm wearing it. Headband, headset, LED, headlamp, light jeweler, magnifier, magnifying glass, loop. From Save On Many, um, who are in Montreal, or just outside uh, a suburb thereof. Uh, this cost me $13, which was the cheapest of this style of thing that I could find. I think... I think that's going to be good. Um, I'll, I assume I'm going to be doing a surface mount kit coming up soon, and I will probably do a model railroad kit soon, because I haven't done one of those in a while. So I will get to play with it and find out uh, how useful it really is. Okay, next thing is, is a Module Nano V3 Proto Page Shield. Hmm. I recognize most of those words as something that I probably would buy. Oh, it's simply another one of those nano prototyping shields. Okay, uh, well, not really prototyping. Um, oh, a sensor shield is what those are called normally. Basically, you just drop your nano on top of them and it gives you ground voltage and signal for each of the pins all the way around. Plus, it's got a barrel jack input. Uh, it's got its own 5-volt regulator to go with said barrel jack. So, uh, yeah, and it's, ah, and this one has pin head or pin spots that match a Uno layout. So you could 
populate it with pins and use it with Uno or use your Nano with Uno shields if you wanted to. Module Nano V3 Prototyping Shield IO Expansion Arduino Prototype. I got mine at auction for $1.33 Canadian, which would be about 99 American pennies from somebody who doesn't sell it anymore. So I will link to this search um, for when I link down in the description. But basically there's not much that uh, we don't already know about this thing. I think I've featured them before. They're real handy and I've used them a whole bunch. They're especially nice when you're working with servos because the uh, servo pin out fits on those pins perfectly without any modification whatsoever. Okay, what do we have here? MP3 WP Rose 1. Hmm. Rose? It's an MP3 player. That looks suspiciously like the good old Sansa clip. Except for, of course, this one has no branding on it at all. What do we got in the box? A bunch of paper. A cheap set of knockoff, um, like, iPhone 2 or iPhone 3 headphones. You know, the really painful ones to wear. And a little USB cable. And this guy has an on and on off battery got any charge in it at all probably not we have a usb and a micro sd connector okay hmm wonder how much i paid for that mini clip usb digital mp3 player audio players support tf card walkman plus earphone no no it's not a walkman um this i got from afcam afcam something like that uh Currently, it's going for $3.68 with a 14 American cent discount. Woohoo! However, I got it at auction for a little bit cheaper for $2.68. So that's good, and it comes in a variety of colors. So, what does it have to say for itself? 100% brand new. Good. Uh, made out of metal. Various colors. USB data storage, USB 2. Yeah, whatever. Clip on. No built-in memory. You need an extra TF card. Okay. MP3. Um, oh, goody. I can put in a 128 meg SD card, if I can find one, uh, or up to 32 gig. That's good. Two-hour charging time, five-hour play time. Okay. That's reasonable enough, I guess. Built-in lithium-ion. Sure. Um, can be also used as a flash drive. Yeah. It's going to show up probably just as a USB bulk storage device, isn't it? Packaging includes MP3 player, charging cable, and earphones. Yes, yes, yes. Although not that kind of an earphone. I would have been happier with that. That wouldn't rip my ears to shreds. The one that came in and came with it is probably not going to be very comfortable. So I've been charging it up for a little while while I was uh, uh, recording that other piece. And I also found an SD card to throw into it. My fingernails won't do that, but there you go. The little SD card. I think this one's uh, oh, 16 gig. Wow. That's about half the maximum size of this thing can take. So let's see what happens when we plug it into the computer just with the USB connection here. Doink. Does the computer recognize it? It's not. Let's turn it on and see if the computer recognizes it. Hmm, is that just a charging cable and not a data capable cable? Let's try it with a different cable. There we go. Open the folder. Uh huh, and I can see the files that I have on there. That's great. Um, yes, there is my YouTube library. Don't sue me music. Excellent. So, um, it's charged up a little bit, and you saw that I have uh, some 
music on there. So I've got this powered speaker thing over here. Uh, yeah, that's just because I don't have anything connected to it. So I'm going to plug it into there. That's kind of noisy. That's, uh, that's almost as noisy as that. Okay. What happens when we turn it on? Hey! That's pretty good. Oh, I like that. That works well. Huh. Volume, yeah, down. Up. Okay. Well, that works well. Hey, what more do you want than a cheap little MP3 player? So. so I was saying that this is reminiscent of the Sansa clip. I went upstairs and got my kid's actual Sansa clip, which this is not exactly what I remembered for whatever reason, but it's still got a very powerful clip on the back. Anyway, that's just as powerful and this exterior here is all aluminum which is nice the only plastic bit is the sides and the little dialy thing that's all right i guess i should try these cheesy headphones out too where's the microphone up here that's not bad i guess yeah as predicted these are uncomfortable in the ears. And so on the really early iPod or iPhone earphones, this piece here would have been kind of rubbery or something. That's just hard plastic. I mean, what do you want for less than three bucks though, I guess, right? Let's see what's next here. This one is entirely labeled in Chinese. Okay, pure surprise, that's good. Hmm, a modular kit or something. Well, that's interesting. Maybe a bent potentiometer. With a nut that's fallen off. We have a couple of big devices on heat sinks. We have a fuse, big ass capacitor, 470 mic, 763 volts. Aha, there's a clue. We have a motor plus minus and a power plus minus. So I'm going to guess that this is the motor speed controller that I ordered at some point. A 12 volt to 40 volt 10 amp PWM DC motor speed controller switch controller volt, volt regulator dimmer. Ah, from Alice 1101983. I got this one at auction for $2.08 or a buck 55 American. Of course, free shipping. Do I need to keep saying that? It's always going to be that. Controls the speed of a DC motor with this controller. High efficiency, high torque, and low heat generated with reverse polarity protection, high current protection for up to 40 volts or down to 12 volts. Uh, 3 kilohertz PWM. Okay. To my surprise, I'm a little short of 12 volt motors. The closest I've got is these little toy motors for... Uh... I picked up at Princess Auto for using an locomotives, but they'll do. So I've got my power supply set for about 14 volts, which in short bursts shouldn't be an issue. So that guy obviously spins at that speed. So I'll just tie it onto the output of this guy, which is that one there. Now one thing I notice is this is not a reversing thing it's only a, it's a universe unidirectional uh controller that's okay i guess um i may not even use it for motors because you can probably use it to pwm uh, anything right i'm gonna try it with some leds later and see how that and see what that works like okay so now then if i turn this on i have power there that's good. And if I turn that up, can you even see that? If 
Should put a flap of tape on there, shouldn't I? That would be the professional YouTube thing to do. Okay, now we can tell if it's spinning. Ha! Ah, cool, okay, that works. Let's try something else. So now we have my ill-advised attempt at building a camera ring light. Uh, let's turn that back on and see what happens. So, oh, that's interesting. So they come on just dimly there as I crank it up. Nice. I have achieved light dimmer, although unfortunately it doesn't go completely off. There's still just a little tickle going through there. Let's try it with one of these little LEDs. Uh, these are designed to operate with 12 volts AC coming in, but they will all work off DC too. Oh yeah. But again, it doesn't dim them all the way down to nothing. But it does definitely do the job. Cool. Okay, let's try it with these beasties. These are 3 watt LEDs each. I've got three of them in series um, because that's the power supply that normally goes with them. But I'm going to run just two of them in series. Um, so they'll be about 20 volts drop. I'll crank this guy up to its max. It's about 19 and something volts. It's just coming off a laptop power supply. I'll turn him on, and oh, we do have some light. And we can dim it and control it. Uh, that's drawing about 140 milliamps right now. That's spiffy. Although it looks like I do need something to absorb energy in parallel when it's right at its minimum, because it doesn't seem to go completely to zero. But for a motor, it does go to zero, so that's cool. And the last thing in for today, it just says electronics. No clues. Some chips. Some MOC3023 chips. Hmm. Obvious I'm going to have to do some research on this. Five pieces Fairchild MOC3023 Opto Isolators Transistor Output Dip 6. Transistor Output? That's not what I thought I got. Uh, from Deep Learnings. Uh, I paid uh, $1.33 Canadian for the five of them. Aha! This is what this is what they really are. They are Triac Output. Which means they can drive a Triac, which, which means they can... Uh, ultimately control something that's AC line powered. Let me show you here on the data sheet. 250 volt photo triac driver output. It can handle 250 volts AC on here uh, or 7,500 volts uh, across it. Um, it's designed for 220 volts AC, but normally you would use this to control a larger triac. However, you can do it this way, just using its built-in track. Where is the... Oh, wow. So this thing can actually handle 1.2 amps on the output side. Huh, okay. That wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting it to just be a low-current device, and then you'd use it to trigger a much larger triac. Like that. And that's the application that I had for it. I was, in, I was thinking that I could uh, hook... Oh, I don't know, maybe an Arduino up on this side of it in place of these logic gates and drive a high current AC load. And I just happen to have a couple of 6 amp triacs left over from my younger days. Some of you may recognize this as an old Radio Shack package. Um, so these are rated, what are these? Well, 6 amp, 200 volt, right there, okay. So that's, uh, that could have potential. And the reason, <laughs> let's go on a little side trip, shall we? The reason I have these from way back when Radio Shack existed in Canada was because in my youth, I built this and this from kits. Um... 
yes, they would in fact sell AC power or AC line uh, messing with kits to teenagers back then, and it was a completely reasonable thing to do. So this, for those of you who are uh, too young to remember this kind of stuff, is a uh, a color organ. This one is a one-channel color organ. This one's a three-channel. Basically. Speaker level audio comes in here in from here. So you just uh, run Wires in parallel with one of the speakers on your home stereo hi-fi unit That speaker level audio is transformer isolated Which prevents you from blowing up your parents stereo Which was the only concern that my dad actually had was that I didn't damage his stereo He wasn't concerned that I was messing with live AC uh, Times have changed anyway, um so there is uh, almost nothing going on. You adjust the threshold here and the, uh, the triac gets turned on and off, um, turning on and off your light in time with the music. The three channel version works basically the same except for it's got three filters. And I think, do we want to go into this thing right now? I don't know, do we have time? Quickly, this is going to be some really ugly horror show soldering in here because I was, this is before I was 16 years old. I was too young to drive. My parents had to drive me, you know, half an hour to the nearest radio shack to buy the parts for this thing. And I can't remember if this was a kit or if it was something that I put together out of a magazine project. This one was a kit. Uh, that was the box that it came, all the parts came in. And yeah, you can just barely see the Jana logo on there. Anybody remember them? So anyway, this guy. Oh, oh, cringe and embarrassment. Uh, what is that? Piece of milk jug plastic to isolate it. At least I had that going for me. Um, wow. Some tape to keep the uh, heat sinks from banging into each other. Uh, random screws. I did use heat sink goop, so at least I had that. Uh, so yeah, basically there's just three different passive audio filters in there. Three different capacitor resistor networks. And then these pots in series to control the sensitivity of the three channels and then the speaker level audio was enough to trigger those triacs and then of course a master gain same thing here transformer isolated fuse protected uh, 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 yes uh, or it was fuse protected at one point um and i guess i Using my grandpa's soldering gun, I must have burned that track off, so I just wrapped some wire around there. Wow. I probably shouldn't have shown you that. That's, that's embarrassing. So there's today's random assortment of mailbag items. And it is pretty random. Uh, let's check the uh, shipping times. This guy here took six days to get here because it came from within Canada, so that's not really a surprise. Uh, the mp3 player took 24 days and that was a nice cheap auction. Yay The opto isolators took 23 days The nano proto shield thing took nine weeks. Wow That's the slowest one of the day and the PWM speed controller another auction win came in at three and a half weeks well That was good. I like that. Um Thanks for watching as always, thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me uh, keep doing this. And uh, yeah, any comments or questions, you know the drill down below in the comment section. Talk to you later.